What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, it's all about the new E-Ruck we are building. Check this thing out. We'll walk you through it right now. Let's get into it. This is the first build that we didn't actually have a full donor bike to break down. So this is the initial frame that I started with, just a nice new green. And there's all the yummy tabs that I took off. Yay, shrapnel. So I ground it down and paired it up to the frame. God, is that a hideous orange, <laughs> but it works. And this is just to make sure everything fits because sometimes when you're working with used parts, the frames don't exactly line up how you would want them to. So after I got that all finished up, I went ahead and took the rear frame back to my buddy Drew at Redbeard. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you've seen him weld a ton of our projects. He does great work and always my go-to guy. I then took everything to powder and man, that matte blue that I decided to go with paired with the gloss black looks amazing. Video just doesn't do it justice. The color is technically a Volvo Rebel blue, but I found a matte powder that'll match it. So I'm gonna actually do the battery box in matte as well. I'm super excited to do something a little bit different in that way. And then the QS motor that's belt drive is gonna be pulled up to that. So it's gonna be awesome. The gloss black and contrast. I just really like it. And you always see people do high gloss builds. So I'm excited to do the matte, something a little different. Oh yeah, and didn't you know, battery trays can double as a bed for your kids' stuffies. Next up, I went ahead and started to grease the front frame where the neck goes in and the triple tree. I've used all new bearings on this build. Uh, with any build, we always use new bearings. So greasing on it all up, making sure it fits nicely. Just kind of snug it up there and voila, beautiful. Then we'll fit the battery in here. This always is such a task. Oh my gosh, this battery is like a solid 60 pounds and you have to include the battery and the tray together. Lifting it in is really problematic. But it was kind of cool when we throw this tray back onto the top. Just how nice it ties everything together. I'm glad that I went with the two-tone blue on top and black on the bottom. Really happy with it. And you can see here, again, matte. I just like the matte color. It's got a little bit of sheen to it. I just need to make sure I never use any polish or wax because then it'll bring out some gloss to it. While throwing on the front lowering forks, I need to tell you guys that we officially have the Ruckus kits for sale. We actually sold a couple in passing in a soft launch and I think I have one or two kits still listed on the website, 3cminiworks.com. Super excited to get those out. I just wanted to slow roll them to make sure production goes as I planned it, but otherwise should be pretty good. Super excited about that. Just getting more electric out to the world. And I went ahead and used this Mojo Customs front bracket. It's a little bit bigger than what I normally use for the headlight itself. So that means that the headlight will stick out like another inch versus where I normally have it, which is about right here. I couldn't get that headlight, so I got the next best thing and Mojo Customs always makes great products. So I figured why not with this build. And that's with the installed light. I'm happy with how it came out. Again, it's just a little bit bigger than what I would like. It's fine. Again, we're gonna sell this bike once we're done with it. So it'll go to a new home and whoever gets it, I'm sure will love it. This build, I went ahead and took the rear cover off of the rear frame and I'm just machining out, drill pressing a slightly bigger footprint because the controller that I got for it was not the correct footprint at all, but it's fine. We'll make it work and it'll look beautiful. It's just a matter of how you do it. You can see here, it's where I cut the holes. They were on the edges, so I didn't want to do it by hand. And you can see just how tight that is with the controller just about touching the frame. It really couldn't be any tighter. So we'll see how it all fits up once I actually get the seat on, because for all I know, the seat won't clear. You know, building process stuff. And here's a great depiction of how well this powder coat matches this battery box paint. Just look at how close of a match that is. You can see the glare from the light on the wall and how it reflects onto the top of the battery cover and onto the battery box. It's just to a T, beautifully perfect. I could not have asked for anything better. The blending there was fantastic. Let's go ahead and throw that on just to get a good idea for how this is all actually going to come together. And just appreciate what it's coming to because the matte color is so underplayed with builds. I just, I'm so excited to share this one with the world. Switching gears over to the handlebars, I went ahead and 3D printed a rough idea for a plate to adapt the speedometer to the handlebars that we got from Mojo Customs. And this is roughly how it's supposed to look. I do need to fine tune a little bit, but then we can just slap the speedometer on there and make it look like a cohesive unit like here. So I'm really excited with how this came out. I can touch the adjuster dials easily on the back. And then likewise, this is not going to get in the way with any of my controls. It's just going to look nice and sleek, almost factory. We'll send that out for powder once we get it cut out of metal. So this is the bike as it sits from about two weeks of work. 
you know, most of that time I'm waiting on people to get back with me with powder or things in transit for the mail. But, you know, we're making progress and beautiful progress at that. I'm super excited. We'll go ahead and get this all wired up next week and we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. Thank you.